Hey guys, it's Jeremy the Math Person, and today I'll be going over question 273 on SOA exam P. So pause the video real quick and try this problem yourself. Okay, I assume you already attempted it, let's just dive right in. A flood insurance company determines that N is the number of claims received in a month. Is a random variable with this thingy for N equals 0, 1, and 2, so on, so on, so on. That's basically just saying it should be an integer. The number of claims received in different months are mutually independent. Mutually independent. Calculate the probability that more than three claims will be received during a consecutive two months period. So this is two months period, but they give you what it is in a month. Given that fewer, fewer than um, two claims were received in the first of the two months. Okay, so I'm gonna assign. I'm gonna say n one is the first month, and n two is the second month. Okay, so they're saying calculate the probability that more than two. Th Three claims will be received during month eight, one plus month two. One, month one plus month two should be more than three claims. Given that the first month had less than two claims. Okay. Well, we always know that when it's like N1 plus N2 is greater than three, that means that value has to be here, right? And it's so, and it, because this is a discrete function, it's easier for us to just find a complement. So just doing one minus one, two, and three. So the numerator is going to look like this. Or we can just take this out and figure out the probability of n1 plus n2 is less than or equal to three, and n1 is less than two, given the probability of n1 is less than two. Okay. Because again, the formula for um, conditional probability is A and B is equal to, or A given B is equal to probability of A and B over probability of B. And so then this ends up being looking like this probability of, this probability, um, this conditional probability looks like this, and one plus N2 is greater than 3, and n1 is less than 2, divided by probability that n1 is less than 2. Okay. So then this is, and we take the complement of that, so it's easiest for us to find the numerator. Let's just work on the denominator first. When can n1 be less than 2? Right? This is 2. It, well, it could be less than 2 when probability is, n, when n1 is 0 or n1 is 1, right? So then the numerator, we can, I mean the denominator, we can rewrite as probability of 0 plus probability of 1. So when can n1 plus n2 be less than 3 and n1 is less than 2? Okay, I think I'm going to make a little chart. Well, n1 we said is less than 2 when, so this is n1, is could be less than 2 when um, it is equal to 0 or 1. We just talked about that, right? And we're trying to find the probability that n1 plus n2 is less than 3. Is less than 3. Okay, so then what possible values? Well, that means n1 plus n2 can add up to 0, 1, or 2, or 3. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. So this could be equal to 1, right? Because then this way, n1 plus n2 is just 1. N2 could also be equal to 2, because then 0 plus 2 is just 2. And N2 could also be equal to 3, because 0 plus 3 is 3. But N2 N can't be 4, because then 4 plus 0 is not 3. <laughs> it's bigger than 3. And then same thing. I can't. It can also be 1. It could also be 0 here, though. I forgot about that, because this could also be 0. 1 plus 0 is just 1. Or it could be 1 plus 2. It's 3. 3. But it can't be 3 for this value here because then that will be equal to 4. Okay, so that's what we have. So the numerator looks like this, right? Because they were um, independent. We can just multiply it for each month. Here, I think I'm going to do P1. Yeah, that's fine. Or maybe I'll do it this way. N1 equals 0 times probability that N1 equals 1 plus... Oh, this is going to be pretty long. Oh, it's fine. Probability of n1 equals 0. Probability of n1 equals 2. Plus probability of n1 equals 0. Plus probability that n 
one or oh wait times probably the n two oh girl this is what are you doing and two equals three plus probably the n one equals zero times probably that n2 equals zero okay so i think i'm gonna extend this plus probably that n1 equals one i'm right here now times probably that n2 equals zero plus probably that n1 equals one times probably that n1 two equals two over the probably that n1 equals zero times prob plus probably the n one is equal to two. Oh goodness that was a long thingy majigers but then that's easy now because we already have this right so we can use that function our random variable it's defined by that so we can just use that so this is technically equal to when n one is equal to zero it will just be equal to two thirds times two ninths plus two thirds times two twenty seven plus two thirds times where am I? I'm I'm right here now. Uh eighty one right two to the fourth yep plus zero zero is just two thirds times two thirds. Okay now I'm here. This is equal to um, when it's equal to 1, that's equal to 2 ninths times 2 third plus 2 ninths times. I'm missing a value here. Oh, good, good catch, Rumi. Plus probability of n1 equals 1 and probability that n1 equals 1 as well. So this is 2 ninths times 2 ninths plus, yeah, 2 ninths times Two, three to the um, th third power is 27, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Divided by n1 is equal to zero. Well, that's just equal to two thirds plus n1 is equal to one. Well, that's just equal to two nine. One. Okay, so this is equal to one minus two, one, two, two, forty three. Divided by, this is just 8 ninths. Okay, so if I do this part, this is equal to 1 minus 53, 54, which is also equal to 1 over 54, which is approximately equal to 0 0.0185, which is our answer E. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!